Good morning guys, welcome back to today's vlog. So today is Wednesday the 9th of March. I am currently three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, three days, three days away from my uh, GB Ultra um, Cheshire 50 miler. I um, obviously competed powerlifting at the weekend, so I thought today would be a really quick update, as quick as my updates get. I know I have a tendency to segue and go off on, on tangents, so we'll try and keep this one short and sharp today. So yeah, off the back of competing on Sunday powerlifting wise, um, I had a couple of long, hectic days at work trying to squeeze in clients um, over Monday and Tuesday. I've been in the clinic early this morning to do some um, some group session work and things like that, um, some of my online stuff. And yeah, so it's now just gone half past seven in the morning. I'm feeling pretty tired. Didn't get very much sleep last night. The last couple of nights I've been working late. I've got a few other projects that I'm working on. Um, which will then be some recorded seminars and workshops, which I'll also post through this channel as well. Um, working with a couple of cycling events to be able to just offer some nutrition support and some training advice and support for cyclists who are taking part in an event called the uh, was it RBC Ronda Van Calderdale. It's like a kind of uh, pretty tough, apparently, cycling event that goes on and around um, parts of Yorkshire. So yeah, I'm involved in that this year just to to support some of the people who've entered it, talking about nutrition some training, what to do in the last sort of six to eight weeks or what not to do nutritionally in particular. Um, and you know, as people ramp up their training, matching training demands, energy demands and stuff like that. So anyway, that's gonna be the general theme. So that's what um, I've been in meetings, sorting that out the last two nights, as well as just generally doing Q and A's and you know, my education sessions. I've had a, sh a few students in the clinic this week as well, working with me. And unfortunately, it's a bad week for students to come in because I've had a lot of athletes competing over the last couple of weeks. So they tend to take a, a week or so off out of the out of working with me here. Um, so yeah, they come in. So it's just been kind of just just general chats about you know the nature and the state of the industry, things to watch out for, benefits of working and trying to focus on working with athlete populations versus general population. You know, and some of the misconceptions about how easy it is to just kind of get working in, in jobs in elite sport. Um, through different organizations but also i think the perceptions around a lot of athletes and very dedicated athletes like how much money they earn and things like that can be quite challenging i obviously work with a number of professional fighters and i think the expectation is you work with pro athletes and therefore they're earning you know hundreds of thousands of pounds a fight or whatever i think we get this kind of very blinkered view of what a professional athlete earns and that's not true of a majority of professional athletes even in certain sports that you might think are well paid relatively speaking particularly with the duration of the career they're, they're not as well paid as you might think. So, you know, that's why I think as a, as a performance strategist, consultant, whatever title it is I decided to give myself this week, um, you know, it's, it's, it's having to work across a diverse range of populations. And, and it is challenging because, you know, you assume that, like you say, I've, I've, got, I've got some athletes that are, you know, I've worked with some athletes that are multi-million dollar a year athletes to athletes that are very new in their pro career or, you know, just good level amateurs or competitive age groupers, if you want to call them that who um, who basically just kind of do it for fun um, and and therefore you know sometimes their budgets might be a bit limited or a bit restricted um, so yeah I think there's a lot of misconceptions around that anyway I told you I'd go off on a tangent today my own stuff so basically um, off the back of a couple of days of long days of work today I've got basically working this morning then I'm off now until race day um, nutrition and hydration the last couple of days has been okay I've, I've, I've still been, I've still felt a little bit dehydrated. I still think like my body's recovered a little bit, took me a little bit longer than I would have liked, um, mostly because of trying to get back after Sunday's powerlifting competition. I think I mentioned it on the last vlog. It was a bit of a nightmare. And then straight into work and like, yeah, I've not been as prepared as I should have been this week. So yesterday I made a really big effort to go and like get all my food for the day, make sure I had my hydration on point because I had a busy day. So I'm feeling better this morning, although a little bit sleep deprived because I was, like I said, I was up at five this morning. I didn't get in from work till about 10 o'clock last night. So yeah, um, but apart from that, I'm feeling good. In terms of the important stuff that I was worried about, having had a, a like a chronic back issue, um, competing on Sunday hasn't caused any flare-ups. Anything that's there is just a bit of tightness. So I've tried to fit in a bit of stretching and mobility related stuff. Wish I'd done more of that. So I'm gonna have a good, a good. Uh, I'm gonna beat myself up a little bit this afternoon, not too aggressively, just get into some of those tighter tissues um, to loosen off a little bit. Um, the only thing I've got, which is kind of a bit, like not even, I wouldn't, concerning is a strong word for it. The only thing I've got, which is a bit of a kind of like, oh, it's there, is just underneath my patella on my right knee, just feels a little bit tender. But I've done a, like a gentle run 
on Monday and it felt fine. It's not flared up. I'm walking about. I don't even notice it until I notice it, if that makes sense. Anyone who's ever competed in any sport or running or like lifting or anything, any sport, like I said at the start of that, will know that like as you get closer to an event, your brain sort of starts to focus in on every little thing that's gone wrong. Like every old injury you've ever had will resurface. Um, so that's just part of the experience and, and, and actually it's not that bad. The main thing that I'm really happy with now um, which is kind of testament to actually doing the work. You know, if we want to do ultras, we want to do powerlifting, we have to start to think in a bit more holistically about looking after our body and you know, recovery becomes more important, focusing on sleep, making sure we've got good proper nutrition. But also on top of that, if we are picking up little niggles and injuries, it's not just enough to manage pain. Like I see this a lot with people who maybe see physiotherapists or osteopaths or sports therapists or sports masseuses. All those things can play a role in recovery, but you have to be doing the work like so I had a bit of like a bit, a bit of a hip, ab, hip, hip, hip abductor problem um, and so I've been doing aggressive rehab on that and shockingly shockingly doing the work has made that pain dissipate you know getting injured in, in the first place was partly my own fault I think I touched upon that a couple of videos ago about just yeah not specifically training for the right terrain you know being specific with my training um, and I think when it comes to ultra running as well so this, one, this might be a good theme for today's video and one of the reasons why, if you're ever thinking of doing an ultra run, it's not the same as running a marathon. It's very different. There's changes in terrain, and that change of terrain isn't just on the event itself. It can be because of the weather and other conditions as well. So don't underestimate how much changes in elevation, both up and down, can have an impact. So running up hills and running down hills, ascents and descents, very different loading patterns on the muscles. If you're on terrain which is unstable or uneven, you know, around the knees, hips, ankles, um, those can have a real, real impact on those, even if you're an experienced and seasoned runner. And I've actually had clients of mine who've been like road runners, be out with a friend and go for a, a, an easy sort of 10 to 15K trail run, thinking it would be easy because they've run marathons and then come back with, you know, calf issues, hip issues because of that. Um, so when we're talking about trail running, we have to be specific, we have to run on trails and we have to learn to run in different terrains and, and through different seasons if we're going to compete in that season. Um, so for example, the race I'm doing on Saturday, the, there's one section of about seven to eight kilometers, which is just like a slip and slide. So if you imagine your feet are sliding around, those adductors and those glutes are gonna be working extra hard. So that then kind of comes into race strategy, race pacing, you know, footwear and all of that stuff, kind of like in Formula One, where you know, you've got, a, you've got different terrain, different grips, different weather conditions, and you've got to kind of figure out which tires you're gonna wear and when. And that's where for ultra run in particular, particular, particularly super long distances, that's where your pit crew become essential or if you haven't got a pit crew that's where you're planning on preparation and making sure that you've got everything that you've that you need for every eventuality or as many eventualities as you can possibly account for because sometimes things will just throw a massive curveball like last year when I was doing the Endure 24 when there was a massive thunderstorm in the middle of July and they had to all pull us off the course um, so that was that was a fun experience nearly getting hypothermia and then sitting in a little car cramping up for three four hours before I could get back out running again um, so yeah, that was a fun day at the office. But the point I'm trying to make is that, um, you know, if you are thinking of doing ultra running and you are a road runner, don't just assume those distances are comparable and not, that they're just not. Um, and, and vice versa, actually, if you're used to running on like kind of softer terrain and, and, you know, nice soft woodland trails, and all of a sudden you want to start taking up road running, give your body the respect it needs to adapt and the time it needs to adapt, uh, the respect it deserves to adapt and the time it needs to adapt so that you can, um, you know, you don't end up with injuries and things. Um, so like my hip flexor problem came because I had the stress fracture. I'm not painting a good picture here for myself. I'd had the stress fracture uh, from the Endure 24 and then I'd had an event sort of 12 weeks later and I just didn't have enough time to get as much elevation as I'd like. And that was the issue, you know, tra training on that specific t terrain, particularly on descents can become very frustrating because you run up a steep hill and you think, right, great, well now it's going to be downhill and that's going to be easier, but then you've got that kind of eccentric loading through the quads, you know, your feet are sliding and slipping all over the place. So with this course this weekend, I've had the opportunity to go out and do a bit of running on this course. The first 25K is fairly easy um, in terms of it's just canal towpath. You know, there's, it's, it's very well paved. There's a few bits that are a bit splashy, the way there's like some water, standing like surface water, but nothing dramatic. Then there's one section um, from about 22, 23K to about 30K, 32K, which I know is just gonna be frustrating. It's not hard in terms of elevation gain or anything like that. 
it's just frustrating because it's muddy and it's slippy and when I did my trial run a few weeks ago I slipped over I fell over twice the first time it was funny the second time not so much so very much trying to pace yourself I don't think over the last couple of weeks since I did that there's going to be too much change in terms of it's been a bit drier but if there's any rain and if, if it's even remotely kind of moist it's going to be slippy so I think just mentally getting through that bit in one piece and not putting too much pressure on yourself is is, is important. So the approach I'm going to take for the race is basically I'm going to run the first 25k fair, with a fairly high effort, fairly high level of effort. The slippy slidey bit, I'm going to just kind of drop the pace, take my time, you know, not get frustrated, watch my foot in, don't do anything silly, slip or injure myself. Then after that point there, it hits kind of a, it's like more of a pure trail race. So there's a few fields and a few bits of mud there, but most of the next from about 30 odd k till about 50k is kind of what you would call classic trail conditions. So there's a bit of rock, bit of farmer track, bit of, um, but mostly just kind of fairly well defined, fairly well compacted, not too unstable, not too much elevation, but slightly undulating terrain. And then the last, the last 15 to 20k is same again, road flat, easy work. So I want to make sure that I've got plenty in the tank for that last 15, 20k. Um, so that I can get myself back to base camp in a reasonable time. So plan is work hard, cruise, work hard. Basically broken down into 25 to 30K sections. So 25 to 30K hard, 25 to 30K easy recovery, plenty of time to fuel. Last 25 to 30K, boot it if I've got the energy. Um, and then on top of that as well, I've got, uh, I've got some pit crew. So my cousin is gonna meet me about halfway. Quick change of footwear after the boggy muddy bits. And then off I'll go on my merry, merry way. Um, for my nutrition for this one, my hydration and nutrition for this one, I'm going to use, um, uh, I'm using high five. Yeah, high five. Um, I get on with it quite well, sits well in my stomach. I'm probably on Friday, I'm going to talk about pre-race day nutrition. Um, or sorry, race day nutrition, because I probably won't have a chance on Saturday to do any vlogs. But today I wanted to talk a little bit like kind of just my prep for this next few days. So obviously coming off the back of the weekend, it's just been a lot of recovery mobility, trying to not let my diet slip entirely off the back of having quite an aggressive um, weight making, uh, weight making effort approach. I don't know, my brain's mush today guys, I told you it was early. Um, yeah, that weight making effort. So surprisingly my appetite hasn't been super high. So I need to make sure that this week that I've just been not eating in an energy deficit, but also not justifying eating a load of um, low quality, low nutrient dense food. So I've been really focusing on that. So what I tend to do for my ultras is I tend to have my biggest eating day, the biggest eating days two to three days before. And the reason for that is simple. On the Friday um, before the race, usually there's lots of other stuff going on organizationally, but I don't want to be putting a lot of food into my stomach if I'm running early on a Saturday morning because anyone who's run run long distances will know, you know, there can be bathroom issues. So I want to make sure that all my carbohydrate stores, my body's fully recovered. I've loaded my body full of nutrients and all the good fuels for running today and tomorrow. So that come Friday, all I need to really do is worry about just, you know, having like a fairly normal day's eating, foods that aren't going to overload my digestive system because the race starts at 6 a.m. on Saturday. So I'm going to be up about five o'clock so if you were having a big meal, like, you know, people will carb load the day before. I think that's kind of fine if you've got an experience running and you know your own gut and it's maybe distances to half marathon, possibly up to a marathon. But when you're talking about doing that twice that distance, the last thing you need is to be starting in the morning on a trail and then needing to try and find a bathroom somewhere. I mean, fortunately for this event, there's lots of aid stations and I think there's lots of availability for bathrooms and stuff. But I know for me personally, and this is, you know, if you're an athlete, you've got to try these things. Some people might want to fuel a little bit later. Some people might want to fuel at the start of the week and then just keep topping up their glycogen stores with a small amount of carbohydrates through the week. Me personally, two to three days before. So it's obviously Saturday, so today's Wednesday. So Wednesday, I'll have a big, a moderate to high carbohydrate loading day today. I'll probably hit 500, 600 grams of carbs. Bearing in mind, I wouldn't normally go that high today. It's just obviously off the back of last week's depletion for the powerlifting competition, I'm still playing catch up with that. I still feel flat. I can still, I still look flat when I look in the mirror. I can see I'm not fully restocked yet because I was straight back into work and being, being busy. Um, so that's why I'm taking two much higher days than I normally would. Normally I might just take one day. So I might just take the Thursday, have a really big like carb load, calorie load that day of, you know, maybe try and get in 800, 900 grams of carbs. What I'll probably do is do 600 to 700 grams of carbs today, 
and then tomorrow probably about another 600 to 700 so 1400 over the course of two days that's around about over 10 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight which is ballpark recommendations of what they would say for refueling um but also when you think about those endurance fueling recommendations they're typically built for endurance athletes whereas you know i've got a little a little bit more muscle than your average endurance athlete um, so I need to make sure that I'm taking those amounts nice and high. Um, and like I say, I'm not worried at three days out from a, from a run whether I'm going to gain, you know, I'm not worried about gaining, um, what's the word? I'm not going to worry about gaining body fat at this point. You know, I've had a, a, like the last week before the powerlifting comp, I was probably in some significant deficits for the last three or four days. In fact, the day before I know I was probably in about a 2000 calorie deficit on that one day alone, just keeping food volume low, higher protein, lower carbs. Um, and I just don't really gravitate towards fat sources. So that's where I'm at. Overall, the body's feeling good. The hips fully recovered, so the aggressive rehabs help with that. The back hasn't flared up. Um, I'm not going to be spending any nights in any strange beds or anything, which is likely to mess me up. That's another thing that I've had issues with before, and I got away with when I stayed. Obviously, I stayed away at the weekend for the powerlifting competition. Fortunately, for having a terrible night's sleep, that at least the, the bed didn't ruin my back, which can be a problem. Um, so yeah, it's the body's feeling good apart from the knee, and that's just a little niggle. It'll go away. It'll be fine. Um, nutrition wise ramp it up today good quality foods maybe throw in a little bit of junkier stuff in there as well just to get the carbohydrates in so I don't want to feel bloated because again coming off the back of having not a lot of food last week um, and lower fiber content I can definitely feel my gut is struggling a little bit let's just put it that way so that's another side of it as well that you need to kind of balance if you're doing um, weight making reducing carbohydrates reducing fiber in order to make weight you've got to be aware when you start putting those foods back in there can be some digestive system um, interest let's put it that way so yeah feeling good ready to rock uh friday's video what i'm going to do is just talk about probably my intra race nutrition approach so i'm gonna i'll focus on kind of the foods that i like my approach to it but talking more globally um about some of the different experiences that different athletes have have and this sort of principle of of individualization and specialization of nutrition for the individual um so yeah stay tuned for that so i'll speak to you all on friday cheers guys Peace.